Welcome to Support Life, a program focusing on current social issues from a life-affirming perspective. I'm Gavin Bolch and my guest today is Danielle Sullivan. Welcome, Danielle. Thank you for having me. Good. And uh, you, you didn't have to travel far today, did you? No, not at all. I'm maybe 10 minutes away if I get the green lights. Good. So that's oh, good. <laughs> okay. So you're a green light girl. But yes. you lived on a place where there were lots of green paddocks. We tried. We tried to keep them green. Yeah, I grew up in northern Victoria on a dairy farm. So that was a lot of fun. And then mm -hmm. I moved, yeah, to Melbourne three years ago. Okay. So most of your life was sort of practicing being a greenie. Oh, <laughs> maybe. I don't know if my dad would describe it quite like that. But yeah, we, we had a lot of green paddocks sometimes and a lot of environmental issues, I guess. <laughs> yes. And um, one of the things that you were smart enough to get out of was milking, right? Definitely. I had three brothers. Yeah. So I tried to shirk that responsibility by saying that maybe they should milk the cows and I would stay, you know, in the house and help mum. Tried to keep those gender roles in place so I could get out of waking up early and going to the cows. Okay. What do you like of cooking? Yeah, I don't think I did that responsibility well either. Dad loves scones. Oh, does he? So scones are my specialty. Yes. Um, yeah, everything else. I'm probably mediocre. Okay. But I'm better at cooking than I am at milking cows. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> All right. So what did you learn on the farm oh, up near Shepparton? It was, it was great growing up on a farm. I think a lot of my time was spent um, with my siblings. So I've got four siblings and growing up with them was fantastic. You know, we didn't have a lot of other people to play around with. Our neighbours were a few paddocks away and, you know, things like that. So... Yeah, I learnt a lot about family life mm. and then also farm life as well. Okay. Anyone um, musical in the family? No. We're the least musical family. We're the opposite of the Von Trapps, I like to think. We definitely have sing-alongs, but they're nothing that should be recorded. <laughs> and yet, talking about recording, there's something that you really like to do well, and that is edit. Yeah, I love editing. So I'm currently studying media and communications. I'm in my final year and I love the editing side of film. So it's great in group projects. You know, the rest of the group can go out and film and hand me the footage and I finish it up and hand it to our lecturer. So that's good. That's yeah. good. Do you have a kind of a, a little festival where you can take some of that footage and chop it into anything you want to and have, have a laugh at the end of the year? Yeah, definitely. There's... um. I do a lot of editing for this um, youth um, program called Stronger Youth. It's based in the Sandhurst Diocese. So from Bendigo to Wodonga is our range almost. And we do a lot of um, videos and social media, but we have um, a big retreat once a year. And yeah, there's usually a few outtakes there where we put in some of the laughs that we've had <laughs> throughout the year. Good. And uh, who gave you the last Oscar? Not yet, unfortunately, Not yet. but you know, there's always hope. There is. I'm young, yes. <laughs> plenty of time for an Oscar in there somewhere. Okay, now um, media, you've been studying it. Yes. Uh, what happens to the stuff that kind of bypasses your conscience? It just goes through the eye gate and it's stuck in your head. What are you doing about correcting that? Yeah, well, I was never really aware of it. Um, before I studied media, you know, I, I've grown up on Disney films and, you know, when I was in year eight, I think I got my Facebook account and it's still very active. Um, but I was never aware of what I was, you know, letting into my brain until, until I studied. We did a unit called Power, Propaganda and Persuasion and it sounded interesting. And then it turned out to be so informative, you know, more than probably some of my other classes, um, where all of a sudden I became more cynical than I ever thought. I would be and I started to question everything that was you know entering my mind I would second guess why they would put that in there or whose product placement that was and things like that so yeah um, since studying I definitely have started questioning everything that I see and allow into my mind I hope okay. I hope I question it all right so so you're on the journey of becoming not just media savvy but media wise yeah I hope so I'm Good. trying okay but that puts you in a very interesting driving seat because you're the editor. Yeah. You have power. All the power of what these people watch when it comes to the videos that I edit. So, yeah, I definitely try to be conscious of the decisions I'm making to, you know, 
be aware that there's no hidden agenda and we're just trying to, you know, give the truth and give good messages rather than, you know, sell out or have some secret hidden message behind what we're showing. Uh-huh. So you use invisible ink a lot? <laughs> I try not to. Green screens? Yeah, some green screens. Lots of noddies? <laughs> Lots of that. There's lots of um, pop culture references as well, so we try to make them fun. But okay, so so how do you kind of navigate um, social media today as a young adult? Well, it's it's so present. I had to, you know, I've turned my phone off maybe once in the last month. But other than that, my phone's constantly on, never within two meters of my like out of two meters of my body. I like to have it close in case anything should happen, but I'm always on Instagram, Facebook, you know, Buzzfeed is another one that, one of my top apps probably. So yeah, navigating it, that's not a problem. I'm spectacular at that, but navigating it wisely, that's what I try to be conscious of. I try not to get sucked in, I hope. All right, so what do you want to say to other young adults who are just as savvy with yeah. your little tools? I don't, be, be aware of what you're letting in. Every second post is probably an advertisement for something. Um, you know, they're down the sides. So yeah, just be wise, be aware, and notice what you're letting in to your brain. Because once it's there, it's hard to shake. I, you know, when I brush my teeth, I notice that I've got a certain type of toothpaste and I question why I have that. You're like, who told me that I needed this one? And why does that one make my teeth wider than any of the others? <laughs> So, yeah. Well, if, if that's a rhetorical question, I don't know either. <laughs> that's all right. So you're not behind the toothpaste advertising then? Okay. No. That's good to know. No, no. <laughs> no, I thought if I did that more often, it would help. So when you seek to reach the youth in the area, um, how much time do you put into your editing and how many pieces go out? It's a fair bit of time, so it's all volunteering. I work with um, a small team and we all get along really well. Um, but yeah, a lot of hours go into it. Um, a lot of hours of the filming, then the editing, then putting it up on social media and kind of advertising it. But yeah, I guess a lot of time, but it's really good. Um, and the messages kind of get out there. It's a lot of photos and videos mostly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we'll come back to more of that in a moment. You're watching Support Life, and we'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Support Life. I'm Gavin Bolt, and my guest is Danielle Sullivan. Danielle, we're talking about the joys of being involved in social media and doing some editing and the power of all of that. So, um, you find yourself in a kind of a part-time position yeah. for support life. Yeah, it's a really recent position. It's been just a few weeks at this stage. So yeah, it's exciting and I'm yeah really kind of keen to see where it's going to take me. Okay, so Daniel, why you? <laughs> That's a very good question. I, I hadn't heard of support life about a month ago. And then all of a sudden I received um, an email from a young woman, Rebecca Walsh, who was in this position before I was. And she contacted me and asked me if I'd, you know, be keen. So I started doing my research and, you know, I found out about this incredible program and what they're trying to achieve and everything like that. And yeah, I thought, well, I can help. I can be there, surely. Okay, but you've got two other part-time jobs. Yes, yeah, so I, I work at Bunnings and I'm a nanny, so they're, they're good. They're a bit of a means to an end, so they pay my rent. You know, I'm living out of home now, so rent is a real thing for me. Um, so yeah, that's what I have those for. But this this is something more, I think. This is a, yeah, I'm pretty passionate about this and it's only been a few weeks. Like about 30 days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what's happened in those 30 days? I mean, using the word I'm passionate about this. Or yeah, well, I think... It's just such an important, you know, thing in our society to have an avenue for people to really kind of get the information about what is important in our world. And, you know, especially with social media, we're getting so much rubbish thrown at us that when you get these real truthful and important things, I think it's really important to support that yeah. and to help that. 
So as um, a young woman, you like to be fully informed, not bits and pieces. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And informed about the good things, yeah. you know, I think that's important. So life is precious. You're on a farm. You've, yep. you've seen all kinds of things, calves born and definitely. goodness knows what Too else. Too many. Too many. <laughs> and um, you've got four siblings and yeah. so family and life are very precious. Definitely. And I think that, yeah, that's a message that can sometimes get lost. So the more that we can stick to that and help that, yeah, get out there, I think the better. Okay. So you're bringing these skills to support life. Um, how many hours a week do you think initially you might be able to put in? I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it's a part-time job, say, I was speaking to Rebecca, who did this before me, and she said roughly eight. So that's my ballpark figure. And so far I've been doing that. It's a bit of a handover and getting a grasp on all the different things at the minute. But yeah, over time, I'm really excited to kind of see where the role takes me, um, especially getting the message out there on social media. I had never heard about Support Life and I spend hours a day on social media. So if I can get the message out there, you know, on those kind of mediums, then I think it will really help. Okay. Now, um, obviously, your research on Support Life has sort of pressed some buttons yeah. uh, and you're pretty excited about what's what's happening. Um, when it comes to emotional heart truth, okay, how, how does God press your buttons? Well, yeah, I think emotional heart truth is really important. Um, I, say, I say yes to a lot of things. If people ask me for a favour, I struggle to say no. And I think that that comes from kind of that desire within me to help people and, you know, to serve them as well, which I think definitely comes from, yeah, God and my love of God. So with Emotional Heart Truth, any message that I spread, I make sure that it's one that I stand for. And I think that that's really important. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, there's a story in the New Testament, one of the parables, and talks about two guys, uh, dad's a farmer, and um, they're asked to do some chores. And one says, yes, and doesn't show up. The other says, no, and does show up. But when you say yes, you really mean it, don't you? I try to. I definitely try to. There's been so many times in my life where I've said yes to 10 things, but I've only had time for two of them. So I just kind of get to a point where I'm like, God, I can't do all of these. And then he always pulls through. He provides abundantly. So yeah, I'm definitely grateful for that. And whenever I say yes, it's, it's a yes that I mean. And I try to push through and complete it to the best of my ability. Fantastic. Now, um, our, our word is very important, isn't it? Definitely. Okay. Our name goes before we get there. It goes before us. Yeah. Okay. So um, here we are with some social media experience. Um, I wonder if you might think about putting some material together for Support Life. Yeah, I hope to. reach to. on social media yeah, other definitely. young adults. Yeah, I think that, you know, at this stage in my life, um, I'm 21, so I'm in uni, I have a couple of part-time jobs, I'm questioning a lot of things, I don't know where I'll be in one year, five years from now. So I think that, you know, other people my age are also questioning. I can only assume that, you know, they're in a very similar position that I'm in. So yeah, if I can get some material up and show them what Support Life is about, um, then yeah, I think it could help a lot of people. Okay. Um are you going back to the Shepparton area for Christmas? Oh yeah, I'll go home for a few days, spend some time with the family, but uh, I have a few jobs in Melbourne, yes. so I should stick around for those. But yeah, I'll spend some time with the family. Great. So that'll probably be what, just the Christmas break, you know, sort of Christmas Day through to New Year's Day or a bit yeah. more? Yeah, uh, maybe a couple of days before Christmas, a mm. couple of days after Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, not a huge break, unfortunately. What takes place? in the family home at Christmas? Oh, well, this could be our last Christmas on the farm. So mum and dad are, you know, have recently sold it, which is a bit sad. So we're probably going to move on. So I think there'll be a lot of reminiscing, a lot of time spent outside swatting flies away. Um, there's always a traditional water fight, which dad used to win, but we're all a bit bigger now. So we can probably get him, you know, for the last few years, we've been the ones winning. So that's nice. <laughs> I always used water. It's the magic <laughs> vehicle for fun, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Especially hot summer, you know, Christmas time. So yeah, it's fantastic. Water crystals. 
hoses, yeah, balloons, buckets as uh, well. Buckets. Up, yeah, up, a little up, brother to up fill up, up a roof, bucket. Up yeah. on the roof, waiting for someone to pass. Something like that. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we hope that we don't put the dampener on other people's Christmases. Yeah. You're watching Support Life, and we'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Support Life. I'm Gavin Bolch, and my guest is Daniel Sullivan. And we've talked about Christmas. <laughs> yes. And, and the water fights. Yeah. That, okay, all right. So, obviously, young adults love fun. Yeah. I, I like to think so. Good. Okay. <laughs> so here, here's all this wonderful social media of which I participate in and I send emails badly. <laughs> so tell me, what, what are young adults thinking? You, you've seen some of the shows. Yeah. Um, are we informative? Is it informing you? What's happening? Yeah, I think Support Life is definitely informative. You know, when I heard about it and started doing my research there was so many of the episodes that I just wanted to watch you know I read the names of who was being interviewed and I thought you know they they would probably have something very interesting to say and it turns out they did all of them did and it was really exciting to see that that's you know in new in this role that's what I'm becoming a part of I'm going to be an avenue for this message you know this life affirming message to you know reach so many people, especially young people, I think we really need this message. Um, so it's exciting. Okay. So what do you think other young adults, as you bump into them, yeah. being one, um, are on about when it comes to the issue of abortion? Are they informed or ill-informed? I, I don't know if they are informed as much as I think they are. I think a lot of us are in stage where we're at uni, we know a lot. We like to think we know probably more than we do. But I think especially with that issue, we're really not informed as much as we ought to be. Um, a couple of months ago, I was at the March for the Babies in Melbourne and there was a young reporter there from university who was, he came up to me and asked if he could interview me. And as soon as he started speaking, I thought, oh no, he's on the opposite side of, you know, this argument to me. So I was a bit flustered. But he started going on about, you know, these laws in Victoria and how, you know, in Victoria, the you can't really get an abortion. It's quite hard to get one. And I stood there, I was like, no, oh, in Victoria, we, you know, we have some of the worst laws in the world. And he had no idea. So I think that he was, you know, he stood there, you know, ready to kind of fight me on this argument. But quite soon into the interview, I realised he, he didn't know what he was arguing and that it was really sad to see, but you know, it was kind of exciting that I could stand there and inform him. So yeah, I think I think there's a lot of room for information on, yeah, particularly the abortion discussion with young adults. And sometimes I think we haven't thought it through until we're put on the spot. Yeah. And it all tumbles out and oh we have thought about it or I do have an opinion. Yeah, definitely. Yes. I think that's much the case. I was so flustered until I realised that I knew just a little bit more than he knew. And that helped, you know, defend my argument, defend these children. Um, yes, yeah, so that was good. Great. I, I love that. I, I, I think often um, we become concerned that we are going to be put on the spot and we'll take a back foot position. Yeah. But we don't have to. No, we no, could no. almost say, well, um, let me ask you a question. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's always so many things in hindsight where I was like, oh, I wish I could have chatted with him a little bit longer, but that's okay. Um, yeah. You, you don't know who he was reporting for? Uh, it was a university magazine. Okay, yeah, good. So. Good for him. I've been looking up on the website every now and then to see if anything's been written up, but I haven't found it yet. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, what do you think is lacking with within social media today? I think, you know, honest truth. I think, you know, there's a lot of truth that people put out there, but sometimes it's truth just hiding a couple of things or, you know, a particular aspect of truth. But I think that if it was real and honest truth, then the world and social media would be a very different place. So I think that's what's lacking. Okay, do you think um, social media has encouraged all of us to edit out the things we don't want to be seen. 
Completely. I was watching um, last year, maybe sometime, a TED talk from Sherry Turkle, and she spoke about this, you know, we're connected but alone and how, you know, you can edit things out of your life so easy. You just have to press the backspace button, retype it, and all of a sudden a quiet night in watching a movie was a great night out and, you know, you had fun and it's so easy to, to portray a life that isn't real and you're not leading. And then, yeah, that goes out to everyone. And I think that it's, yeah, it's too easy to lie on social media. Okay, so it's really easy to lie. I mean, we just put that little bit of spin on. Yeah. And uh, there we are, change the adjective, adverb, something. Yeah, it's definitely, it's way too easy, I think. <laughs> so how do you think we can improve uh, building relationships with people in the real world of face-to-face? -face? I think just making time for it. I think time is such a precious gift and, you know, when you're on, you know, social media especially, you, you can be doing so many tasks at once and just happen to be communicating with someone. But I think giving someone your undivided time and, you know, going out with them for a coffee or lunch or whatever it is and just being with them and putting aside everything else, I think that's something that is really important. I think that can help so many relationships. Do you think that what's happened over the years is um, we meet great friends, but we only need to have a slight difference of opinion. And that seems to be enough to break friendships because you don't see it as I see it. What's yeah. happening there? I, I agree completely. I think there's, you know, a lot of people in my life I can think back on that. Yeah, you know, we were great friends in high school because we had that common interest of needing someone to hang out with at lunchtime. But then as you grow up and you become, you know, adults, I think we like to think of ourselves as adults, um, you, you can't kind of form opinions and they're your own and you get quite possessive of them. You're like, this is something that I've decided on, this is something I've researched and yeah, I'm really proud to have made this decision. And then when someone doesn't share that, you can become quite offended and you know, you're not willing to talk it out. You're just kind of like, oh, but I, I researched that. I thought that and you don't agree with me. Yes, yeah, so maybe friendships tend to be on the shallow side. Yeah. Uh, and we need to work at that because how will we ever really get through life? You know, reality is about communicating. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, a lot of friendships are probably too shallow and we need to really strengthen those and deepen those if we want to make them worthwhile and long lasting. Okay, so those who, who perhaps are watching the show and uh, are getting to know you a little bit, because probably we'll interview you again when you're further into the job. Um, what, what would you say to them about how to improve their communication skills? I think probably make time for other people and be vulnerable, put yourself out there and show what your opinions are. I think that was a huge stepping stone for me in the last month. I had to go and tell everyone that I have started working for a life affirming TV program on a community channel and they were like, what? What do you mean? What does that involve? And I had to be vulnerable and I've met so many interesting people so far because of it. And I think, yeah, it's really exciting. And Good. <laughs> well, we look forward to what you experiment with uh, as you reach um, young adults uh, <laughs> and those that uh, do have opinions and ought to have. And now we're going to give them a little more information to be more informative. Exactly. Hopefully. Okay. All right, Danielle. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much for having me. You've been watching Support Life, and that's all for our program today. Join us again next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.